Hello there, and welcome to another GIMP tutorial. I guess I should start off by apologizing for the extremely long delay. It's been like uh, like a year, I think, since I last did one. To be honest, I haven't really been checking the account. I didn't think that they would be quite so well received. And uh, I don't work in GIMP anymore. I, I work in Photoshop. But that doesn't mean that I won't be uh, starting to add more videos again. I still like GIMP. Uh, it was still it's still what's got me uh, interested in in the graphic design stuff. So I'm gonna keep making videos for you guys. Uh, hopefully, add them more regularly now, since I know that people actually watch them. So today I'm gonna be showing you how to create this uh, a funky retro '80s kind of wallpaper going on. It's really cool, really funky. We're going to learn a few specifics, some basic text manipulation, how to overlay a pattern, stuff like that. Uh, before we start, there's a few things that you need. You need uh, the texture that's overlaid over the text, the halftone effect in the background, the font itself. So I'm linking all these right now. <coughs> so you go ahead and pause this video, go to those sites, download those, um, install the font, and once you've done that, come back. So, let's get started. What you want to do is create a new image. Uh, I'm creating my 1900 by 1200 because that's the dimensions of my desktop. You can create it pretty much whatever size you want. And there we go. First thing, put your paint bucket and fill your background with black. And now go to your text tool and select the font Tron that you downloaded. It's a great font. And do the color. Um, we're going to be like a pink. I have it here. Uh, the HTML notation is uh, FF00CC if you want to be exactly like me, but a bright pink works. And go ahead and click on your screen. Now type uh, the first word, Mike, and close that. Now. We're going to want to rotate this, so go ahead and uh, click Rotate, click that, and for the angle we'll do a negative 45 degrees, and there we go. Now go to your Move tool, and ensure that the Move the Active Layer is selected. And let's move this up right about to the corner of your image, like that. And now let's create another layer, Skills. Good. And close that. And again, same thing. Rotate. Negative 45. Enter. And let's move that up. Now you'll notice once we move this up, and it kind of bumps against the edges of the, of the image, um, because it's it's a longer word, it's bigger. It we have this weird space in between mic and skills, so uh, a couple ways you could do that. When you when you type the text, you could resize it, you could change the font size, or you can go to your resize tool, scale tool, click keep, aspect, make sure that's checked, and go ahead and grab that, and let's resize it. And scale it, and um, you know, it's always easier to scale down than up. So if, if it's a little wrong, don't worry about it. You can always scale it down a little more, so that's pretty good. And finally, let's create the 1985. That is a completely arbitrary date. <laughs> it just looks good. And uh, do the same rotation on that, negative 45. And we'll leave the size as it is, because it's, it's a good size. <coughs> and there we go. Fantastic, that's great. So, let's add some texture to this text to really, to really bring it up, really bring it to life. So open the texture that you downloaded. And go, the first thing you want to do is desaturate it. So just do uh, colors, desaturate, choose the shade of gray based on the average. Now that that's done, do a control A, and then a control C, or command A, command C if you're on a Mac. 
that will select. Pattern, go ahead and paste. Now when you paste it, go to your Layers Channels Path box and you'll see that it's a floating selection pasted layer. That means that it hasn't secured to the image, it's still, it's, it's not officially in the Layers dialog. So what you want to do is right click, New Layer. That creates a new layer and covers the entire screen. So now what you want to do to make this see-through is you want to do uh, mode, select the layer, click mode, and go to hard light. As you can see, that adds texture to the text but also to everything else, but we're going to fix that. So first, let's go ahead and move it up around a little bit just to make sure it's good parts on the mic skills, and we're just going to go to color brightness contrast. Put the contrast to positive 50 and the brightness to negative 30. That just gives it a little more life. Click OK. Now as you can see our problem is it's still over the whole image. So go to your Layers, Channels, Paths, Box. Now go to your Layers dialog and if you type your text in the order I did you'll see the 1985 is on top. Right click that and click Merge Down. And then merge the Skills layer with the mic layer. So now the 1985, the skills, and the mic, they're all on one layer. Right? You can all... That's what we want. So, get over to your toolbox and click the Select by Color tool. And go ahead and click. And as you can see, it selects all the text. Now head back up to the hard-lighted texture layer. We're going to double-click that and just rename it to texture so it's easier to see. Texture. Now, this is an important step. You can either go to Select, Invert, or Control-I. That inverts the selection, so now everything except the text is selected. Now, uh, hit Control-X, cut that, and there you go. Now hit Control-Shift-A, and it deselects it, and there you go. Now it's got texture on it, put some life in it. So, now let's create the text that's kind of rotated and hiding in the background to add some flavor to this. You can right click on your mic layer and click duplicate layer. Duplicate. Now, your copy layer, your MIC copy layer, whatever you want to name it, we'll name it text copy, and hide that. So click on the eye and it's gone. And let's also hide the texture. So now we're only working on the bottom text layer. What we're going to want to do here is give it a rotate. Oh, I don't know, we'll say like 13, positive 13 for the angle. And uh, maybe that was a little too much. Let's bring it back a little bit. You don't want it to be too wild, but you don't want it to be so close that it muddles the other text. So that looks pretty good. Let's move it to the over to the right a little bit and down a little bit. So let's go ahead and turn on the layer on top. And uh, it looks like a big jumbled mess now. So go ahead and on the text on the copy layer, on the top text layer, go ahead and reduce that opacity. You can kind of see the rotation's good. We'll call the rotation good. So hide your top layer. And let's focus on this layer. What we're going to want to do now is that, that cool dot effect. It's called the halftone effect. So you're going to want to open your halftone SVG file. Now SVG is a scalable vectors graphics file, which means you select the width and height. Now, uh, since my width is 1900, that's what I'm going to do. You can punch in whatever your width is and it sets the height automatically. So don't, don't touch that or it's going to look squashed. So let's see, like if you were doing 1280, it would set it to what it needs to be. So I'm going to do 1900. Let's open that up. Give it a second, and there we go. Again, Control A, Control C, paste that in. Go to your Layers box, right click New Layer, and let's name that Halftone. All right. So now we got to add the halftone effect to the layer there. We're going to turn off the background. 